Hello and welcome to Motivational Minute with Yolanda. I am going to read some scripture and then end with a prayer. I am going to start at Luke 24. I believe I'm going to go into uh, starting at 1 to verse 13. It says, On the first day of the week, early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In, in, their, frightened, in their frightened the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee the son of man must be delivered over to the hand of over to the hands of sinners be crucified and on the third day be raised again then they remembered his words when they came back from the tomb they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others it was Mary Magdalene Joanne Mary the mother of James and the others with them who told this to the apostles, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bent over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. I'm going to start here at verse, still Luke 24, verse 33. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still about while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Rise. Why do you doubt? Rise in your And why does doubt rise in your minds? Look at my hands and at my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bone, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they were still and while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. That, that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. And he told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Hallelujah. So this was um, chapter 24, verses 33 to verse 49 hallelujah he has risen oh father god let us go to him in prayer father god we thank you we thank you because for us you rose we thank you lord for your word that becomes our road map and our guide to eternal life we thank you lord for your word that shows how you suffered and sacrificed for us. We thank you, Lord, for your word 
that washes us as white as snow because of your love for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because on that third day, you rose for us. And you rose for us with all power in your hand. You rose for us to give us eternal life. You rose for us taking sickness, sin, death to the cross with you. You rose for us so that we would have the re- ability to repent, that we would have the ability to come to you and ask you for our forgiveness. You rose for us, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, no greater love. No greater love is the love that you have given us. No greater love compares to the love that you have given us. No greater lover is you, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just come to you asking you to help us to be the lovers that you would have us to be. We come to you, Father God, knowing that you already know the anxieties of our heart. You already know what it is that we need. And you're so gracious to us, Lord Jesus, that you told us that if we needed and if we had want of anything, that we could come to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the ability to come to you at all times, not just in times of need, not just in times of sorrow, but even in times of joy and in times of confusion. Because you love us, Lord Jesus, you said that you would come to and that then you then because you left, you sent a comforter for us, Lord Jesus. You sent your Holy Spirit to wash over us, Lord Jesus, to protect us, to lead us, to guide us, to show us the way in which you would have us to go. And so, Father God, we ask you to give us the strength to be obedient. Be obedient to the things that you are telling us. Be obedient to the things that you would have us to to do and to be. And, Father God, we just know because you know us, because you know our hearts, because you see our soul and understand us, just like those apostles, Heavenly Father, who, even though they walked with you, Lord Jesus, they still did not believe or did not understand. But, oh, you said that when we come to you, when we, when we seek you, we would find you. When we look for you, you would be there. When we knock, the door would be open. And so, Father God, we're asking. We're asking that you touch unsaved family members and unsaved friends and those who don't know you. We are asking, Lord Jesus, that their heart be softened to you, that they come to the door and knock, Father God, because we know that when they come to that door and knock and ask for you, that you, sweet Jesus, will be there. You, with open arms, will be there. You will be there for them to show them who you are. Oh, Father God, and we thank you. We thank you, Father God, because we know it's only your grace that saves. We know that it's only by your grace that we have been saved. So, Father God, we're praying for those who don't know you. We're praying for those in hospitals. We're praying for those who are sick. We're praying for those on their bed of affliction. We're praying for those with mental illness, Lord Jesus. Because we know you are the healer of it all. We know you are the ruler of it all. We know that you are not the author of confusion. So we're praying for those with confused minds, confused about their lives, confused about their plans and their future. Because we know that you created us all and you have a great future for us all. And because you're not the offer of confusion, we know that when we come to you and when we ask you for clarity, that you will bring that clarity to us, Lord Jesus. We're asking you to be with our president and leaders, Lord Jesus. We're asking you to open their eyes and their mind to you and have them to do the things that you would have them to do and to be the individuals you would have them to be. We're asking you to build them up daily in you, Heavenly Father. Daily in you, Father God. We're asking you to be with pastors, Lord Jesus, and those preachers and ministers and teachers of your word. We're praying that the words they speak, Father God, are will be divine words coming strictly from you, Heavenly Father. That they would lead your people and tell your people what it is that you want them to know. And that we would be obedient and our ears and our hearts would be open to the word, Lord Jesus. We're praying for peace, Heavenly Father. All your word says, peace I leave with you. We're praying for your peace to reign over this nation, Lord Jesus. We're praying for your peace to reign over families, Lord Jesus. We're praying for your peace to reign over relationships and marriages and friendships, Lord Jesus. We're praying for your peace to go into buildings, Lord Jesus, and and jobs, Lord Jesus. We're praying for your peace to just shower down on this world, Heavenly Father. Oh, Father God, because we need you. 
We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We need your peace. We need your love. We need your guidance. We need you, Father God. Oh, riches and gold we may have not. And those are not the things that we need, Father God. We need you. We need our eyes to be fully open to you. Our steps to be fully patterned by you. Oh, Father God, we look to you in this holy week, Father God. For even greater enlightenment of your love. Greater enlightenment of what it is you would have us to do. Greater enlightenment of you and your mighty power. And your love for us, Lord. Let your love for your people just shower on them like never before in this week, Lord Jesus. And oh, Father God, help us to love you and to treat you and to honor you as you would have us to. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to boldly come to your throne and just to say thank you, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. May God bless you and have an awesome Holy Week. Until we meet again, God loves you and I do too. Bye now.